I think you target, um, uh, I think it's about education from, early, from an early yeah. age. So informing young children on what equality and diversity means. That like it's not just a buzzword. Uh, and, it, and the impact of being sexist and homophobic um, and ableist uh. and transphobic, what, what the impact that has on other people. Um, so I think, yeah, it's about sort of education and, um, and yeah, probably working with, like, which you're looking to do now, working with university, colleges, schools, and stuff like that to, to access people Excellent. to be able to do it. So. I think teaching um, students as well, I don't think people realise sometimes actually what they can say is racist or sexist. I don't think they realise all the time. Like to them it just is a bit of a joke and actually they don't so education around actually. So teach people about unacceptable. Yeah. But again that has to come from an early age because if you're brought up around it I suppose it just becomes second nature to you and you don't realise. Campaigns like, did you ever see that video? They did. Um, our community officer showed me it on, it was around um, LGBT. Right. And they went round with a video camera and well, asked people, it was in America, um, do you think people are born gay or choose to be gay? And everyone was like, oh, they choose to be, they choose to be. And then the guy was like, all right, okay, when did you choose to be straight? And all of them wow. were just like, oh, I don't know. well, we didn't choose. And he was like, well, that's like, exactly. It was really good. It was really powerful. Oh, it was really yeah. good. That's how you give it. Actually. If you just YouTube it, just um, when did you choose to be gay, and it should come up. Or when did you choose to be straight? I showed you that video, didn't I? The when did you choose to be straight video. Is it really? Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you guys should come down to our campus. Yeah. Like we'd be more than happy to have you down if you wanted to. This is the last day of the. Oh, is and it? we were so lucky to be invited yeah. to come. Um, we've been doing further education colleges mainly, but we 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 felt that this was a good opportunity yeah. that couldn't be missed really because you can be a student in the student union whether you're from a further education college or yeah. a university yeah. or or in an apprenticeship because yeah. we've got some apprentices yeah. here today as well. So we're hoping to get right across the board. What uni are you at? Uh, Manchester Metropolitan. All right. Yeah. So if you, if you do do this again and you get the opportunity, then yeah, definitely come down. Yeah. Because um, we've got massive campus, like thirty-seven thousand students. Wow. Yeah. Um, and we've got a, an outlying campus as well, which is in Cheshire. Yeah. Um, and they do a lot of events with local school children, and school children come onto campus and stuff. So if you can work around when ki them kids are coming on, on, on campus as well. It's just something to, to, to actually talk to them about as well, which would be good. Um, why don't you put your in the invite? I've said, I'm just putting on here, we've got an invite from you, but what university? Uh, Manchester Metropolitan. Um, I suppose, um, information. Um, because I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I'm a, an expert in any of them issues in particular. Um, so I think information and resources um, to be able to work with students um, to tackle sort of specific topics like this. Um, yeah, I think that, that's probably the main thing is is, 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 is for me to be able to 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 gain more knowledge in these areas in order to help. And maybe things like looking at best practice as well from maybe other um, places where you've worked or things you've come across, we'd be able to use this um, as examples to inform my work as well, which is always good. So I always look at best practice from across the sector and things like that. So I picked up some good stuff from two colleges that I've been to, because Katina's been to different colleges than me. But certainly where I was yesterday, was seems so long ago, I went to Dinnington, which is um, a, co a college in South Yorkshire, and they were really good. They had a mock, what I found really interesting. That needs to go on take one of the teams, actually. That's that one. Um, and they've got a mock aeroplane. 
and what they've done is as part of their as part of the curriculum and as part of their roles the lecturers have to do one equality and diversity impact event a year and so the business studies the computing that that um, course they've done all the research around fair trade and then they've given the information to the to another department, I can't remember how they did it, to another department that they then had to do an in on board magazine as a competition, so someone won that and that was used. And they did the boarding passes and then they had all fair fair trade food on the aeroplane. It was amazing because it wasn't done as this is us teaching you how to be. Yeah, it has to be engaging. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, has to, it was just amazing. They probably didn't feel like they were actually being taught about equality and diversity. And I thought that was yeah. really positive. And then another college I went to, they just talked about how they everything included a celebration of equality and diversity. So any, they had an E and D calendar, and every week there was something going on. And um, and from a fair point of view, it wasn't always about. The chaplain was the person who invited us to go. Yeah. He wasn't talking all the time about religion, he was talking about inclusion. And that's yeah. what it's all yeah. about, isn't it? Yeah. It's not about how do we get rid of it, it's how do we embrace it. Yeah. Yeah, like the president role. Yeah, I know, but you know, it's a long way to go. Yeah, no, no, that would be good. Yeah, so I'll definitely. If you take that, scan the QR code into your smartphone, you'll find out what it was all about. And feel free to email or whatever. Yeah, or send other people to us. Yeah, you can eat it, we'll do. Good luck. Of, oh, it's great you're doing it, it's really making a difference. Yeah. And how could that change? Um, changing people's attitudes, really, because a lot of it I've been told that I can't do it because I'm not strong enough to do it. Oh, physically? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's so it's like they want a strong arm challenge or yeah. something with you, do they? Okay. And who could help change that, or how could the people who run apprenticeships change it? What would they have to do? I think it is just a change of attitude that it needs to be impossible. My cheaters are actually really good, but getting out to companies is where I find the problem. And what would work when you go out to companies to make the difference? Well, I don't know, but it is a problem. And what about things like um, apprentices who are disabled or 
apprentices who have a particular faith that's part of their kind of you know who they are at work and we want to be open about that. Does that come up as an issue or? As a as apprentices, um, I mean, where, where I used to work, there wasn't any disabled access at all, I and mean, we just and not many much access for women either. So I think as apprentices, you're, you just let you go in there, you're starting off with a career, you just don't want to keep your mouth shut. I think that's it's really quite a problem for apprentices. You don't really have that opportunity to. Um, so where are you going to get your voice from then? Yeah, to it's say interesting about question, it. I suppose. Um, it's difficult in the workplace to yeah. get your voice across. There's nowhere to. It's a voice, you let your voice be heard, there's no, it's like at colleges you have to learn a voice in the student yeah. councils and in the workplace you don't have such thing. So what are you doing here now as a group with Ben and Pete that might change that or make that better or? I think we make people and just in general and especially anywhere it's more aware of the friendships and how they work and awareness. Yeah. So what would your message be to NUS then? Uh, the same before, like if we knew we're all coming today, we try and get some uh, things in for the conference. Yeah. Um, it's like I was saying, if we had one, like, we'd call it We Are Here because like, clearly we are here. Lots of and you haven't there. felt like you're here no. particularly? Um, there's okay. not been anything to do with the apprentices in the conference. That's good. So um, who are you going to be able to lobby about that then? <clears throat> I heard that Tony had been re-elected, so maybe she'd yeah. be a good champion yeah, to start yeah. with. She and has mentioned the Okay, good. That was a plus. <laughs> Did you plant that, Peter? <laughs> I think a lot of, of um, campuses have been mentioning apprenticeships, but they've done actually have any experience, and I think it's going to be very difficult for the society to, you know, members of the society or potential members of the society to get into elected positions on any seats. I mean, I've tried them now, and um, I think it's, um, yeah, we're going to That needs to happen, though. Yeah, okay, so how, do you, how are you going to do that? What do you need to be able to do? Well, how could we all support you to do that? How could your organisations and training providers make help that happen? Uh, get the training providers, training providers to join the NSA, National Society of Apprentices, get everyone on board and spread the word about apprentices and the Apprentice Association. So uh, people, everyone knows more about it. And then people who go to, uh, from NUS, understand more what, what it's like to be an apprentice, what the challenges apprentices have compared to people moving to college or university. And do you think there are any different equalities barriers for apprentices compared to, say, students at college? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. What, what okay, so you're all nodding. What would they be? Uh, I think we've forgotten about, aren't we? Yeah. I think we are really forgotten about. It's like what Nathan said, that we would have a conference that said we are here. Um, people don't understand the apprenticeships, they don't understand the pay that we get, they don't understand the training that we get as well. So I think that would be... So you need a chance to be able yeah, to share that yeah. and make yeah. that really when, visible. When people ask me about apprenticeships, I'll tell them how apprenticeships are and how bad it is, and they're all scoffs about it, like, they're like, really? And they don't know, so I think that's what... So you need a chance to keep telling that in a yeah. kind of really public way. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what kind of... Uh, yesterday I was talking to someone uh, at our work at the moment, at the PP Center, and she was saying, that, um, well, you know, as students, you know, we, we have loans and we struggle, and actually we're working as well, we're actually earning money, but it's not much money. Yeah, not enough. So it's like, so you're going on about the minimum wage, but we're actually not getting it. Yeah. And it's like, well, we're working 40 hours, well, I suppose 32 hours a week, and they're going today in college, and we're doing stuff on top of that to yeah. subsidise us and the college jobs, and that is quite something to balance. Um, I don't think many people, students generally, with, with other students who aren't apprentices, realise that. And do you think all the staff in the sector realise that? You know, people in... Because no. I, I think that's part of it as well, isn't it? That, that we've got apprentices, but maybe people don't quite realise what that means for you as, yeah. as learners, really. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so, so one of the things, the organisation that's asked us to do this consultation when we go around colleges and um, work-based learning providers and things like that and the network that Neil runs um, with Alex Bankers. And um, we've been asking them really, what could we do in terms of helping develop the workforce that trains you to enable them to kind of improve things for you, particularly from an equalities perspective. Any thoughts about that? You know, what, what extra training should we be giving that workforce so that they can understand what you're doing better or argue your case better or firstly so you got to work very aim and uh branch in Ireland so it's completely different from what it is here. Is it better or it's a lot worse. Okay, in what uh, way? Well here you get minimum wage in Northern Ireland you don't. So what do you get? I don't know if I want to know six, the answer to this. Sixty six pound a week and you work uh, Monday I work uh, on 
Monday, Tuesday I'm in college, which is 9 to 5. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays, I'm in which is 8 to 5. I get 6 to 6 pounds a week in college, and I get paid to 30 pounds by my work placement those days. And when you're in the work, you're not treated like an apprentice, you're sort of treated like someone's just forced in there. You're not really... They don't really want to teach you anything, they, they just want you to do work. Basically just work really cheaply. Okay, there's a few of you nodding about that thing. Okay, and you're nodding quite well, a lot. We, we had a learner voice a couple of weeks ago, okay. and Nathan was a learner rep at that with his own peers from TNT Post. Um, and it came out quite alarming, didn't it? But um, we almost feel a little bit, well, the, the, the voice that was coming was, um, we almost feel a little bit different than everybody else. But then the, someone said, the normal staff. And I went, oh, mm. I thought you normal staff. And they said, well, we, you know, people think differently because we're apprentices and we almost don't want that label. And I thought that was really quite, quite sad. So it's about training the employers and training the people that work with We all with work them. together, isn't it? Yeah. It's about training everybody inclusivity, isn't it? To have that better yeah. understanding. Yeah. And you're talking about then some double barriers, aren't you? Yeah. That there's the barrier of being an apprentice and then if you have any other yeah. kind of difference or you know, part of your identity that you can't find an expression for or that there's kind of um, some stigma around, no, no, then that's kind point. of, so you were describing around being a woman, then it makes that harder too. And, and the, the person we spoke to said, actually, it might be in my head. I, she's you know, got no evidence of that, but certainly no bullying or you know, anything like that. It was just a case of it might be her interpretation right. that she feels different. I don't know. So. Right, but that's harder sometimes yeah. to deal with, isn't it? When it's, you, know, you can't quite get a handle on it and it's not overt then that makes it a bit more difficult for you perhaps, doesn't it? Mm, okay, excellent. Anybody got anything else they want to suggest that we tell the ETF they need to do? It's the Education and Training Foundation. It was set up last August and its job is workforce development for the whole sector. So all of the work-based learning providers and apprenticeship providers and colleges and adult community learning. And they're really looking to consult and know really where important diversity belongs in that. Um, and what it looks like for, you know, and in particular what it looks like for apprentices and whether that's different to the voice that they have heard, both from teaching staff and also from learners. Because there, there is that gap sometimes between those of us who are teachers, what we think it's about, and what your life's experience is like. And often you're the richest resource for getting change, but we need to work out how we help you to make that change happen, really. And it sounds like that's what you're trying to do here at NUS as well, isn't it, really? So you're not only trying to change the employers and your providers, but also the NUS as well. Is that nationwide? Is that no, it just covers England. Mm. So different arrangements for the other countries. But I think the same, you know, policy concern that the workforce is well prepared. But the degree to which it, you know, takes place, it's not joined up across the you whole. Know. <clears throat> so that is a kind of bit of an issue. Anything I've forgotten, Peter or Ben? A busy chat. <laughs> Anything I've forgotten to ask about that's come up as an issue in the discussions around equalities? Not really any sort of apprentices in the student union. It's sort of, it's sort of like we're forgotten about in the student union. I'm the only one from South West Colleges here. So you're it. Yeah, I'm it. Okay, that, you're representing the whole of Northern Ireland I'm here. The whole okay, Northern Ireland. <laughs> really pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from Wales. So if there's anyone there. Oh, you are. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah. yeah. I read it. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I did see. I did see. All so there's also something about a way to join up regionally or something, yeah. so that you can kind of share those different experiences by the sound of it as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, are you enjoying this experience here? You've been here for the whole time. Yes. Okay, that's good. And was it a first in Liverpool for some of you as well? Yeah. Has that been all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's quite good. Okay, and anything else you wanted to know from us? Um, I do, it's not what I wanted to know, but just a, a, an idea comment that you're talking about equality and diversity and stuff. I think it would be really good for you to actually go to training providers and companies that have got really good equality and diversity. I'm being a bit biased, but who I'm with, they're amazing. Okay, in what and way are they amazing? Tell us how they're amazing. Because the, the equality and diversity, I've never had any problems with them, whereas in the past with other people I have. And it's just the way that they treat you as a normal person, not as an apprentice. And the same with my company as well that I work with. I think it would be really good for you to learn what they do as well. Okay, and use that as an example yeah. to share with other people. So can we ask where you are then? 
Um, I work for First of Skills. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. First of Skills. You didn't play First of Skills. No. <laughs> I didn't, but I could see him looking at me like, yes! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so what is it you do? What is it you do that makes it work so well? Um, we listen. Um, I'm, I think more important than listen. We then, and it's, it is obviously the early days. We got our approval to um, the NUS only yesterday, so we're super proud of that. But listen, and actually doing something with, you know. So this is what you said, and this is what we've done. Um, and one of the suggestions that came out of your group was around um, having two reps, wasn't it? So that one can feed back to the other, you know, because. Um, you know, we've got kids and we've got yeah, things going on in life, yeah. and so sometimes it might not be possible to take three days out. So if there's two of us, have a mentor, which you've experienced that, haven't you? So we, um, Nathan and Jason, are supported by one of our learning coaches. So you know, just for and what sort of um, development work do you do with your staff to make sure that they then all respond really well in that way? Take this one. <laughs> <laughs> The, the learner voice is very much about making sure that everybody feels that they can have a say and that works exactly the same with our staff that work for us as well so ultimately they can bring feedback back into the business as well as the learners bring back in and making sure everyone's aware of who they can speak to and then ultimately what the changes are so it's just really helping people to be active listeners okay well, and so you're saying that that i don't want to put words in your mouth but that kind of having the learner voice activity from apprentices that that's key to equality and diversity working well for people yes. in yes, apprentices yeah. and for staff doing the same. Yeah, exactly the same, because we could be improvements ultimately sometimes we don't know what goes on in the workforce, so ultimately by bringing the learners in and being able to listen to them helps us to make sure that our policies are right and then we can then enforce that with the And have you got some examples of where, I'm really putting you on the spot here now, <laughs> have you got some examples of where you've made changes or where you've kind of learned, you know, apprentices have brought things back and you have changed something? Yeah, I think with documentation and things like our learner handbooks, our employer handbooks, again we've just revisited them by getting feedback from everybody to make sure that we've got the right information in there to help support parents, carers, employers to go to the right people who need to extend to some of the change recently. And are any of you um, in workplaces where you've also got people doing the new traineeships as well on work placement? Okay. No, nobody. Well, that'll be the next thing to come along, won't it? To and see how you kind of support those. So good luck with that. Let us know how you get on with that one. Okay, thank you all very much indeed. Really nice to meet you. And um, we'll be posting it on the website on Equalities Toolkit. I'll, I'll email You'll send the link, account. will you? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Bye. universities and colleges that would enable all learners to kind of be themselves, you know what I mean? So that you know, if they're disabled it's okay and you don't have to, you've got mental health problems, you don't have to hide it, if you're gay you don't have to hide it. What is it that we could kind of do um, that would make that happen? So I don't know, a top tip for it or your best idea for it? University, I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> are you at university at the moment? I am, yes. And what I are you finding, doing? Yeah, business management. Okay, and how I'm are you more, finding that? Well, okay, you know, well, uh, I'm more into business sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, creative wise, thinking wise. Okay, and do you haven't met any kind of barriers that relate to issues around age and gender and race or disability or any of those things well, that you uh, thought, oh, I'd like to change that or I don't like the way that works? Um, well, there's, there's always going to be obstacles, barriers, and stuff like that, challenges. Uh, it's just, just, it's just, just the way you deal with it. Okay, and how do you, how would you recommend that people deal with it then? So see, what's worked for you? So, everyone different. I would okay. say, deal with it the way, however you can deal with it. That's what I would say. Okay. You know. And what um, if people are being damaged by the process, though? <laughs> what do we do about that? Man up. Yeah, I could do it. <laughs> I could do it. <laughs> what if people are experiencing bullying or experiencing homophobia? Or, See, um, what do we do about that? I'm, uh, I'm a boxer. Okay. And uh, I got into boxing because I used to, I used to get bullied back in school. Okay. Around. Um, uh, this is going back about, about eight years ago. Right. And right now, I'm a semi-professional boxer. Okay, so that so physicality that, that help helps you overcome yeah, those barriers, yeah. okay. See, uh, the training, see like now, um, you know, I've got into business, um, if, I, if I didn't get bullied, right now I own five properties. Right, okay. I own five on my own name, which I bought myself. So, if I didn't get bullied back then, 
own up all this now. So you think it's given you the incentive? Yeah, yeah, that's why I think right.